Hello, this is Philip Morrow of Philip John K. Morrow Interviews. Today I'm with Brandon Meeks of Brandon Meeks Music. He's a, a special uh, performer, special musician. He's uh, got some amazing albums. One that I've heard recently is The Appreciation Vibration, which you should definitely go check out at his website, which is in the um, description of this video. Anyway, he decided that he was he would do the interview, and I appreciate it a lot. So without further ado, here is the interview with Brandon Meeks. So listening to your newest release, some words come to mind. Thoughtful, touching, honest, jazz, chill, hip-hop. Now that you are finished the album, and you are more than likely to be moving on to the next, when you listen back, do you have any of your own descriptive words to share for the appreciation vibration? So with the appreciation vibration, man, when I listen back to it, uh, the, the descriptive words that come to mind for me are nostalgic, futuristic, and uh, optimistic. Uh, to me, it's kind of like a, a, a trip down memory lane for boom bap heads because it's got like that 90s flavor to it as far as like the way that the drums are gritty and kind of dirty and, and got that dusty sample vibe. But it's also uh, futuristic in a way. Like it's, it, the, the, the melodies and like the, the way I laid out the chord structures and the things I sampled, like the different textures and things, like they kind of have like that feeling of kind of like daydreaming about like the future and what the future is going to be like like if if you can remember what it was like to think about those things when you were a kid so it's kind of uh got like these two emotional states that are going on um now uh like the optimism optimism part when i was making the, the music like i was trying to put something out that would be like just uplifting and just kind of help people keep their spirits up during the pandemic uh for me like just going through the whole losing a lot of income uh, as a musician, like that was that was pretty discouraging and, and daunting to go through. But I tried to uh, fight my way through that by looking at the positive side of it and trying to make the most of it. And for me, uh, that process was just making music and and trying to do something that I that I love and enjoy and be productive and be creative and and make something that keeps my spirits up. So when I put the music out, I was hoping it would have the same effect on the listener. So I think all of the tracks have like an optimistic tone to them, but at the same time, they they can kind of take you between states of nostalgia, reminiscing about the past, and also like kind of uh, thinking about the future and, and looking looking toward the future and, and with, with hope. Your song, Walk By, popped out to me and solidified my appreciation for the vibes. Tell me about how you choose titles to songs and if it's a process or an intuition. All right, so, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer this question two ways because you actu you're actually asking about the song uh, Walk By, which doesn't really have like a, a very intellectual song naming process behind it. Basically, I just took a line from from the music that I sampled and uh, just made that the title. So, in in creating a beat, I was digging through some Isaac Hayes records and I came across his version of of Close to You, which was originally done by the Carpenters, but Isaac Hayes did like this big nine minute like super soulful arrangement of it. And uh, when I came across it, I, I was just floored. I was like, man, this it sounded like he he made this for it to be sampled. So. So like when I found that sample, it was just like, it was like just like a light came on. It was like one of those moments, like a, just a, a big flash of inspiration. So I, I knew I had to sample this record. And um, there's a part in it where the lyric is, uh, why the stars fall from the sky uh, every time you walk by. And like that, that part in the record, like the, it was just, just beautiful for a sample. So that, that I, I grabbed that. I also grabbed like some parts like later in the record, like some stabs and uh, a few different chord progressions to make like two different sections of the beat and, and kind of make like some background vocals over uh, over like the main chord progression that I set up in the beat. Uh, but but that particular part, 
uh, I, I, I was really inspired to sample, and I just took that 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 line every time you walk by, and just gave that gave gave the, the track a title based on that. Uh, so, but normally, uh, if I'm picking titles for beats, because beats are are they're instrumentals, right? So it's not like there's a a lyrical message that you can create a title from. But I try to n name the tracks based on like the the imagery that 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 comes up when I listen to it, or like the emotion that it that it brings up when I listen to it. So, uh, and that and that can be anything, you know. S sometimes I'm, like, I'm listening to a beat, and it can be something that that reminds me of, like just like the 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 lights reflecting off the street on a rainy day, you know, or a rainy night like the city lights just reflecting off different surfaces um, on the street or, or off of buildings and stuff like that, like those blurry, different colorful lights. And I, I might think of something like that and I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a name based on that. Or I might create a beat and it reminds me of like a morning sunrise and I might, I might name the track based on that or I might name the track based on the feeling I have when I see like a beautiful sunrise, like the sun's coming up and you might have some clouds kind of low on the horizon so then you get like all these beautiful re reflections of different colors like like your uh like these lavender colors and reds and oranges and like light blues and and purples and all that all that kind of stuff like in in a sunrise so like I'll, I'll i'll name songs based on that it it really uh in my normal process it kind of just depends on like the the feeling of the track and and like the imagery that the that the, that the track conjures up most of the material is instrumental. I didn't see the musician list, but maybe you could share with me who had contributed to the album if anyone did. And if not, how diverse of an instrumentalist are you? Yeah, on this project, yeah, you didn't see a, a musician list because I was the only musician on it. Um, uh, so like I was kind of saying before, this was a project that I did kind of kind of cut off from the world because of the pandemic not really able to 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 get with my normal guys and uh make like a, a band record so um i kind of just sat at my at my macbook and and just started cranking out beats i was kind of kind of in a funk because like i said the pandemic it kind of caused me to lose a large chunk of my income but i, I kind of still want to stay positive and try to find a a constructive way to to, to deal with things so for me that was just getting on the computer and uh, getting some samples together get my guitar and my bass and uh, just getting creative trying to just make some tracks so so I did all of that just just on my own just just kind of just working through the, the 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 situation of not being able to go out and do shows and do gigs and and trying to keep my creativity flowing so it was just just my cell phone guitar myself on bass, myself uh, pulling drum samples and chopping drums and, and and putting the beats together and you know and same thing with with, with the samples, just uh, just going through YouTube, YouTube pulling samples, chopping up stuff, throwing away things I didn't like, uh, getting excited about things I did like, and it was just me myself and I on, on this one, uh, just you know just just knocking it out, just trying to stay creative, staying positive trying to not think about like what's all the craziness going on in the world and, and just kind of losing myself in, in, in the music. I noticed a comforting consistency to your presence on Facebook, performing live quite a bit with the band on double bass or solo on the machines. What keeps you motivated as a creator? Uh, the thing that keeps me motivated is uh, most of all, like I feel like music is like my calling and the the and very uh, core to my purpose for being on the planet. And uh, I've done other things in my life, like I have a graphic design background. I've worked in ad agencies. I've done like other things, and uh, the more I tried to do other things, the more they would fall apart, and and the more I would end up back with my music. So it's like everything in the universe has been like <laughs> like pushing me in this direction, and once I finally decided to embrace it, it was like, okay, full, full speed ahead. You tried other things and you already know, uh, if you, if you're not aligned with your purpose, like those other things are, they're, they're, 
they're not going to work out right. And if they if they seem like they're working out right, you're still going to be dissatisfied because you're not aligned with your purpose. So it's like I I just I don't want to be in that state again. It's not a very comfortable uh, mental place to be in where you feel like you're supposed to be doing one thing, but you but you're doing something else. It's like you you're trying to you it's like you're going against the current, you know. And uh, it's, 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 it's uncomfortable. You, you, a lot of times you might choose that, that path because you think it's going to be easier or it's going to be more comfortable, but it, it actually ends up being more uncomfortable, more uncomfortable and, and, and harder because it's like you know when you're not doing the thing you're supposed to do. So, like, uh, I'm motivated by just, just wanting to be aligned with my purpose and do and accomplish what I was put on the planet to do, which I feel is to just uplift people with with music be inspiring uh create something that that uh that gets other people going in, into their creativity and saying okay if he's doing that uh I, I i can do this you know just 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 putting as much inspiration and in good energy into the ether as i can uh that's that's the main thing that keeps me that keeps me motivated When I bought your album, Appreciation Vibration, I was sent a thank you plus merch email with the brand name Lo-Fi. Can you tell me about how you see yourself fitting into Lo-Fi music production and a bit about your products? Yeah, man, so what you experience, man, that's uh, that's me just trying to make the listener experience like as personable and personal as possible. Like I... Uh, of course, I have a you know a, lot, a, a nice amount of listeners, and I can't like uh, physically be there and, and, and talk to each one. But I definitely try to create a process and systems that makes it feel like like we're connected. And as much as I can, I am in person, like talking back and forth to people, saying thank you, hey, I appreciate you, uh, shout out to so and so for doing this and doing that. I do that, as much of that as I can, but also when you come to my website and and, and buy stuff, you'll get like certain, like uh, basically like automated messages that come from me. But it's it's still trying to kind of walk you through that that process of being connected with with basically a friend. You know, I feel like that's 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 an important part of being an independent artist. I don't have a label or or uh, any hired professionals to do these things for me. So I try to just be uh, as hands on. And in, in, in the mix with my listeners as I can. Um, as far as like how I fit into like the lo-fi scene, I kind of feel my 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 twist on it kind of has like the the future soul element. Uh, a lot of times, like as I listen to like like the different lo-fi channels and all the producers that are out there, uh, there there's a there's a very specific direction that that a lot of the music goes in, and. Uh, and, it, and it's and it's all dope. I mean, it's definitely coming out of like the boom bap tradition, uh, JD's uh, Jay Dilla's like style of like chopping samples. Uh, New job is like his his uh, the laid back chill element from there. But I kind of come from like a, a a soul music gospel and jazz background, so I try to put like a I try to draw from all those things, but also make it more futuristic as well. So. Uh, that that that's my take on it. Like I try to, I try to do like you know what's 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 considered like lo-fi because I, I I definitely feel that music, but I also want to incorporate like all my experiences from the from the jazz world, from the soul music world, and from gospel, and just bring like that emotional uh, that emotional piece to to the beats that I make. Do you have a song you'd like to perform? Yeah, I definitely got something I would like to play. This one is called uh, Cumulus, so it's the first track on the Appreciation Vibration album. So uh, yeah, so I'll get into it, and then we can we can kind of talk about it a little bit a- after it after it plays. <laughs>
Tell me about this song and the creative process you underwent from writing to recording to publishing. And if this is an improvised piece, how do you channel the music? Yeah, so again, that one is called uh, Cumulus. And like I was saying, I try to name songs based on like the emotional state or like the imagery that comes up. Uh, when I listen back to it after it's done. So on that one, as I listen to it, it, it kind of reminded me of like a like a warm spring day and you're kind of like walking down the street, cum cumulus clouds are in, the, are in the sky, it's maybe like 75 degrees out and you're feeling good. You, 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 you're out and about, maybe the weather was bad before, but it's a good day today and you're like, man, let me get outside and, and get some of this sunlight and get some get some sunshine on my face, as, uh, as uh, Richard Pryor would say. And um, so that's like kind of the imagery that that came to mind, and I felt like that was like definitely aligned with like the the optimistic, uh, hopeful, uplifting uh, vibe that I wanted the the record to carry, and in, in in the emotional state that I wanted to put people in when they heard the record. So I I had to make this the first track like right out of the gate to just kind of set that that tone for people. Um, my my process for for creating. It's a little bit very um on on this one I heard a guitar riff first so like the primary in instrument in this track is guitar and um so I had like this guitar idea first like that bum 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 like I was hearing those changes um on on guitar first maybe I was like listening to some some jazz or like some other like lo-fi beats where they were sampling like uh, just like West Montgomery and Grant Green and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so I was hearing this guitar thing first, and I laid that down, and then I just started just building around it. Like once I once I heard that, this this track kind of came together like real easy. Because sometimes I'll just hear something that's basically like the meat and potatoes, and once I get it get it recorded, I can just like lay down anything to it, and it seems like it'll just work because. I'm, I'm kind of just in a flow. So th this was one of those tracks where I had this guitar riff, just put it down, and uh, immediately I could like hear like what kind of drums would go with it, like how to rock the bass, and um, it all just kind of came together pretty easy. Like this was this was one I didn't have to labor too hard over. This one, uh, this one isn't like really in. I wouldn't call it improvisational uh, because like I had like a, a concept in mind before I sat down to create. And uh, so I kind of just went with like a like a, a concept that was already basically in place in my mind. I just needed to just, just sit down at some in instruments and execute it. Uh, usually like when I'm doing hip hop stuff, it's not very improvisational. Like I, I have a, a clear idea beforehand of like what I want to do. Uh, usually if I try to just wing it with hip hop, uh, it, it doesn't have like the the right feeling. Um, for me, like my process is more like ideas will kind of come to me in uh, in like different in different pieces, and like I'll take the piece, the whatever piece it might be, uh, like a, like a whole idea or it might be a piece of an idea, but it's it's always like a, a an idea that I that I want to sit down with and try to work out. And so I'll, I'll I'll start with an idea and then just develop it. It's 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 usually not me just noodling around and hitting record and just and just winging it. Um, I kind of do all my improvisation like in in on the jazz side of things. Like and even with that, I'm playing tunes or I got like something. I still have a concept, but then I'm improvising within the concept. Is for me, I'm not I'm 
my talent ain't, ain't uh, just just being able to just uh, just just do something and then and then have it come together. I kind of have to have some structure and 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 at least a few rules and parameters to work with. And then and then my my creativity is kind of uh, released by having structure. If if, the, if that makes any sense. Thanks for doing this, Brandon. Is there anything else you'd like to say before you perform your last song? So yeah, man, uh, definitely if, if anybody wants to come and check out my music, you can go to my website anytime. It's called brandonmeeksmusic.com, and I have all my albums there. You can listen to anything that you want, purchase anything that you want. I also have some merch on there that you can get. And uh, something new that I started there is a membership area called Meeks Music Fam. And in that area, I do an EP every month, and I have a virtual concert that's exclusively for, for members. So, yeah, check out any of those things. It's all on brandonmeeksmusic.com, and I uh, hope to see you all over there. Uh, I, I can definitely play, like, one more thing for you guys before we go. Uh, this, what I want to play next is a piece that's that's actually in – in one of the albums in my Mix Music Fam uh, members area, so this is kind of an exclusive for just my members. But I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you guys. So this is on an uh, on an EP that I put out in December for the members, and uh, yeah, I hope y'all dig it. This is untitled. <laughs> Thank you.